Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. Story number one Food War. Written by a glass of whiskey. They had picked up a hitchhiker, as the creature had described itself. Madman in a ship about to explode was the term more commonly used amongst the crew. A lone explorer of far-flung worlds, or a, a lunatic, in other words. This human was mostly polite, but he had been complaining non-stop about the food since he got aboard. Something about no taste. He could certainly eat, often consuming four or more of our portions in one go, but apparently it wasn't up to his liking. Finally, some members of the crew got tired of this endless nagging and the notion that they would have to hear it constantly for another month before reaching the next station became an unbearable thought. With a lot of padding and an ad hoc modifications, a brain scanner was fitted on his hand. Hocked up to the food duplicator, it would produce whatever food the human could think of and had eaten before. Data needed to get the taste just right. Most time, it blew the control chip for the food duplicator, as did the other three times. Either the human food was just ridiculously complicated, or the machine tried to work around something harmful. At the end, the human convinced the team to turn off the safety features, an act that they would soon come to regret. Kari. It was called Biological Weapon that filled the room with smells that would rip a lesser mind into pieces. It was only last-minute caution of standing outside the room in case of a duplicator caught fire, as it did last time that saved them. Even then, two of them temporarily lost their smell at an accident. After that, the human's quarters was moved to where the modified food duplicator was, complete with an added airlock, safe from the human's culinary habits. Far from home and far from any civilization, the second worst thing after the human happened, pirates, as was required, a token resistance was made before surrendering. In it, one of the pirates was wounded, as was one of ours in return. Cargo would be lost, but they had done what they could be demanded of them. That's when everybody remembered that they hadn't seen the human during the entire thing. The last anyone had seen of him was several hours ago, running towards his quarters. A strange smell started to seep through the air. Was that ammonia? Oh no, the food replicator. It could still only do food the human had eaten, but this was the human that had eaten curry. Fervently, they started wavering their arms around to warn everyone to run back to the locker with the gas masks meant to protect against chemical leaks from the engine. Most of the crew got the message. The pirates that hadn't had the pleasure of being subjected to the human before just looked on dumbfounded. They started to sniff the air far too late. What followed was like a nightmare come true. All of their eyes started to turn red. Desperately, they tried holding their breath. A lucky few managed to get themselves knocked out for their effort. The others were not so lucky. Desperate for air, they opened their mouth to breathe and froze, before violently starting to spew forth whatever they'd eaten today, then yesterday, then whatever was left from last week and beyond. Violently shaking, heaving up whatever was left in their stomach sack, eyes filled with blood from broken vessels, the pirates had seen better days. Among it all, the human walked into the room like an angel of pestilence, unharmed from all the chemical weapons. He stood like an indestructible bringer of death, with a plate in one hand and a glass filled with white liquid in the other. His chosen tools were bringing forth terror. The pirates took one look at the creature and did the sensible thing. They ran as all hell, leaving their knocked out friends far behind. We were frozen by fear, an automatic reflex that we struggled to defeat, to run with them away from the human but when we once again had control over our bodies, they were long gone. Everyone turned to meet our savior. Hey guys, uh, sorry about your friends. Uh, I got a dare from one of the guards for the worst food I could imagine. 
and wondered if you'd like a taste. They looked on in horror as the contents of the plate was revealed to them. This is fermented shark in urine, hokal, pointing at the plate. Fermented horse milk, kumis, pointing at the glass of white fluid. And one ghost pepper, a tiny red plant on the edge of the plate. He looked at the gas mask wearing faces. Not up for it, eh? <laughs> I knew I'd win that bet. The perpetrator would be caught and spaced, or perhaps being forced to spend some time in the human's quarters. Yes, that was more of a fatigue punishment. End of story. Story number two. The all-consuming, written by hypothetical Shagath. Quartermaster, what is this filth? A voice snarled down the hallway, echoing past Lieutenant Tash's desk. Swell. This promised to be enjoyable. Look, I know that a lot fights like the last Kree in the starvation pit, and their weapons make some of our engineers need counseling for nightmares or theological objections. But this, this, I am certain violates a fistful of treaties, and would be called unrighteously by even the adversary deities of every known religion. I know my understanding of physical sciences indicates that it shouldn't be possible. Be that as it may, Trooper, but Fleet Medical cleared it as compatible with the majority of the combined forces, and our supply lines have been compromised, repeatedly. But the humans have shown an uncanny guile and aptitude ensuring that enough of these reach our front lines to keep our front from crumbling. Still, sir, what kind of species could think up something like this? By accounts, their planet is overrun with life. Like most others, there's weather. Climates, active geology, apex predators, and aggressive microorganisms. Everything that every other race needed to be nudged to develop. More developed and varied than some of the more, um, fortunate races. But still, how could a species with all of that going for it come up with uh, this? Be glad they did, Trooper. It's saving our collective butts. Oh, you're not the first to voice your concerns. Some including fleet brass and chaplains. We pushed back the humans and eventually they provided what they said was an extremely non-regulation manual on the care and usage of this, uh, product. We were suspicious about some of the claims made in the document, but several R&D divisions back in the core territories have gone through and confirmed every usage. On top of what it says in the label, they can be used as various types of improvised explosives, three kinds of projectile weapons, repair supplies for half a dozen vehicles, and vessel subsystems, medical supplies for more than half of the races in the fleet, and with certain kinds of short range of communication systems. There are also rare but confirmed reports of humans successfully performing rearguard actions against overwhelming numbers using these. Okay, fine. So this Skippy Carlson's non-regulation usage guide is chock full of non-regulation usage for these. That just drives home my point about their base use, sir. At least tell me that the supply lines have been secured and we'll be resupplying with shipments of more sane races. I know the humans are some of the core of our defense and have been at the forefront for some of the roughest defenses. Could we get them back to doing that and leave the supply lines to some of our... Um, Less effective frontliners? The point remains, we need these. The humans are the only ones getting them to us reliably. The Nemesis fleets know where most of our ships must pass through from our core worlds to reach the front. The humans with their dark space stations scattered throughout the void have more options of getting what we need where we need it. So, until we can better secure our lines, we're stuck with these... You don't have to like it. I sure don't. Each time I have to break one out, it hurts my soul. But without them, we'd be dead in space. Fine. Fine. Give me the guide. But I'm not happy about this. You and me both, Trooper. You and me both. The Trooper stomped off, grumbling, and started thumbing through the Skippy Coulson's non-regulation usage guide for MREs. Page 1. Rule 1. Recipe 23 is for fresh recruits only. If you are issued Recipe 23, by any and all means necessary, reallocate it. I still don't see how they could eat any of these uh, MREs of theirs. End of story. 
And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.